Right. Under differentiation from first principle, we can expect about three forms for maths five syllabus. Uh, the form number one that we can expect for our syllabus, we can have the function of x equals to ax plus b. A and B stands for any number constant. CX plus, actually, it should be plus or minus. Plus or minus D. C and D represent the cons constant. Or we can expect this form. <coughs> F of X, the function of X equals sine X or cos x the last one the function of x equals a x to the power n so i've already discussed the the first two uh, today i will be focused on the third one the third form so you can get something like this differentiate 3x squared then if we have something like this and then they say differentiate from first principle then you will have to follow what i've just shown you what i will show you uh, sometimes this thing they won't write it exactly in this form as you can see from here uh, this one when you compare it with this one a will be 3 x is x and then n will be equals to 2 so sometimes this thing take they can write it put it like this they say differentiate this from first principle uh, x to the power 3 so your first task is to rearrange this rewrite this in standard form in this form then you'll just have to say negative 2 x to the power negative 3 so that is the first thing that you have to do is to change your problem in to standard form which is what i've just done now here so maybe they can even give you something like this and say differentiate this from first principle so your first task is to rewrite this in this form then remember if you have something like this this thing is the same as x 8x to the power 1 over 3 all to the power 1 over 3 so when you sim apply exponent loss one of the exponent loss uh, this one a b all to the power n according to exponent loss this will be equals to a to the power n b to the power n so you can apply this law here then you will have 8 to the power 1 over 3 x to the power 1 over then you can try to simplify here then you know that 8 equals to 2 to the power 3 in exponential form 1 over 3 x to the power 1 over 3 then 3 multiplied by 1 is 3 3 divided by 3 it's 1 then you'll have 2 x to the power 1 over 3 so now this thing it's exactly in this form so we manage to rewrite this which is this now into into that form there so always uh, you must do that you must change whatever form to match exactly uh, one of these forms right the common mistake <clears throat> Uh, that normally students do when they change this thing 
and they will say this thing is the same as 8 to the power x to the power 1 over 3 which is wrong so the cube root of 8x is not the same as 8x to the power 1 over 3 so they will take this uh, cube root s it's for x only but that cube root as well is for 8 so it's for 8 and x therefore you must be careful this one is wrong so 8 as well is raised to, is raised to the cube root so that is uh, the common mistakes that I used to meet uh, when it comes to these kind of problems right uh, <clears throat> let's have one problem which will be in this form the third form uh, let's say the problem says differentiate one over the square root of three x to the power three from first principle so when they say we dif must differentiate from first principle it just means that uh, we must differentiate using uh, the limit process uh, we have to follow this this formula so we're going to differentiate using the limit method or limit process so this is the formula that uh, we have to follow when we differentiate from first principle okay the first thing that we have to do here is to write this thing in standard form so let's rewrite this problem in standard form so this will be the same as remember when you have uh, the square root of 4x or 4x squared this square root as I've said before it covers is the square root for 4 and then the square root for x squared then the square root of 4 is 2 the square root of this will be x so it's not the square root for x squared only so the same thing here applies we have to say this thing will be the same as the square root of 3 multiplied by the square root of x cube so which is the same as 1 over square root of 3 multiplied by 1 over the square root uh, okay square root of x cube which is 1 multiplied by 1 is 1 square root of 3 multiplied by square root of x cube is still this so I just rewriting this thing in a different form uh, with this thing is the same as 1 over the square root 1 over uh, this thing in exponential form will be 3 over 2 so from the standard form this thing has to be the numerator it's constant xn so this x now is below so it's denominate we have to change it to come as the numerator therefore we will have 1 over the square root of 3 then you change this thing then you will have x then we change the sign of this exponent we'll have negative 3 over 2 then from here when you compare uh, this with the standard form which is this 
uh, you will see that a will be equals to n oh sorry n will be equals to negative 3 over 2 and then a will be equals to 1 over the square root of 3 so in other words whatever formula that you are going to apply below uh, where you see n you will put negative 3 over 2 where you see a uh, you will put 1 over the square root of 3 right uh, normally on the question paper you will have this they will say determine the simplified form of number one the function of x plus h so meaning that we have to find the function of x plus h so you just have to come take this function of x of yours from the problem the function of x will be 1 over the square root of 3 x to the power negative 3 over 2 so you just have to check compare this one and this one so the difference between this and this is that now here instead of x you have x plus h meaning that they replaced or substituted x by x plus h so it's the same thing when you come on this side we are going to whatever that you do on this side we have to do it on this side so on this side which is this one we replaced x by x plus h so when you write this side as well we have to replace x by x plus h negative 3 over 2 therefore since they said that we have to simplify this before we move to the next step so we have to simplify this or we have to expand this so as you can see here we have the binomial binomial meaning that we have an expression that have two terms x plus h two terms the weight by means two so our expression is binomial so if a certain binomial is raised to the power or raised to, to an index or exponent we have a definition to expand that or we have a rule to expand that so now we have to find that rule so here is the the binomial theorem which is used to expand the binomial expression raised to an exponent so if you've got two terms raised to an exponent uh, to expand those two to expand that uh, we have to use this so this one we use it actually when the binomial is raised to an exponent uh, normally bigger than three so if ex exponent is bigger than three uh we use this binomial theorem thing but if the exponent the binomial is raised to the power smaller value like two uh, we can use the this method expansion i mean yeah expansion or the distribution method where you will have to follow this but once this number becomes big then to it's better to use this because once the number becomes big five or six or whatever it means that you will have to multiply this expression by this exponent if it's five then you have to multiply this binomial by five five times like this so when you expand this traditional I put into this thing here uh, this thing is going to be very long 
so it's better to to use this uh, but at the same time we use this binomial theorem thing to expand the, the binomial if it's raised to a fraction 1 over 3 so this fraction can be positive or it can be negative so we use uh, the binomial theorem for for those uh, situations right uh, okay from this what I've just showed you there it doesn't have a normally our binomial will have the constant so if it has the constant uh, no problem Okay, let's check this one here. Our binomial from this problem is like this. It's saving the constant, which is that 1 over the square root of 3. And then right now here, we have uh, something like this. Constant x plus h to the power n. So our a, which is the coefficient of this binomial, will be 1 over 3. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's not 1 over 3, it's 1 over the square root of, of 3. So we're going to replace a by 1 over the square root of 3. And then x will be x. Where we see x, we put x. Then h will be h. And then n will be negative 3 over 2. Then we're going to replace x by negative uh, I mean n by negative 3 over 2. So let's expand this according to this. Uh, we're going to have a instead of a uh, right this part is this part right now we have to come here. So a is this constant 1 over the square root of 3 open bracket then we'll have x. I said the way you see x, we just put x. x will be the first term, h will be the second term. So in this case, x is x, h is h. Right? x to the power n. So instead of n, we put negative 3 over 2. Plus, we're here now, n. n is negative 3 over 2 and then we have x n minus 1 negative 3 over 2 minus 1 then multiply by h plus uh, n I'm here now negative 3 over 2 multiplied by negative 3 over 2 minus 1 over 2 uh, this thing was supposed to be 2 factorial uh, it was supposed to be 2 factorial there uh, 2 factorial is, it just means that 2 multiplied by uh, the numbers below it uh, meaning that if they say 3 factorial, it means that 3 itself multiply by all numbers below it. So you will have below 3, you will have 2, you will have 1. So that is 3 factorial. So 4 factorial is the same thing. It's 4 multiplied by all numbers below it, which is 3, 2, and 1. So, in this case, we have 2 factorial. 2 factorial equals to 2 multiplied by 1, which is, uh, which is 2. And now, I have to be here. I'm here now. I will have x to the power uh, n, which is negative 3 over 2 minus 2 h squared plus 
uh, the other terms. So we just need three terms. One, two, three. Three terms uh, are enough. So you will get, you will understand during the last step why we three terms are sufficient. Uh, I will come back to that point of why three terms are enough. And then now we manage to expand this. Uh, as they said that we must simplify this, uh, let's simplify as well. Let's try to simplify. So, meaning that uh, I can immediately multiply by this everything, but maybe let me just take a long try. Uh, in the next step, now we are going to simplify. Uh, meaning that our simplifier now will be based on this. I get this, press this using your calculator and get the numeric value and even this one here. So that's what we're going to do in the next step. This one will remain this. Uh, positive by negative, it's negative. Then I will have negative 3 over 2x. This one minus that one, hopefully it will be negative 5 over 2 h plus. Here I can see I'll have negative by negative. It will be positive. Negative 3 over 2 uh, multiplied by 5 over 2. Uh, Three by five, fifteen, blah blah blah, and then over four. Yeah, so here I will have fifteen over four. That fifteen over four divided by two, it will be fifteen over eight. Then I come here, I will have x. Three over two minus two. Uh, hopefully it will be negative 7 over 2 h squared uh, plus the other terms. So the next step we just have to say this multiply by this, this multiply by this, this multiply by that. Uh, the first term will have 1 over the square root of 3 x negative 3 over 2 a this one multiplied by this uh, you will have what uh, Okay, I don't need the calculator here, negative 1 by negative 3 and negative 3. Oh, sorry, that negative is already here. Then I will have 2 square root of, of 3. x to the power negative 5 over 2 h plus this one here as well, I don't need the calculator, 1 by 15, 15, all over 8 square root of 3, x to the power negative 7 over 2, h squared plus blah blah blah. Right, uh, we are done with the first part. Uh, with point number one, we've we managed to get the simplified form of this. And then number two, the question or the sub-question will say determine the function of x plus h minus the function of x. So here we just have to take this function of x, which equals to this three terms, then we're going to subtract the function of x. 
So we're going to replace this by these three terms since the function of x equals to these three terms here. Then let me try to use smaller tasks. I'm going to have one over. I'm just copying this. So is this part now, then you'll have minus, minus the function of x. Uh, remember the function of x, the function of x equals to this. Therefore, we're going to replace this function of x by this, then you'll have 1 over the square root of 3, x to the power negative 3 over 2. Then let's simplify this. So when you simplify this, uh, we are going to have like terms if you can check this one it's exactly the same as this one so this one will subtract this one this one subtract this one then you will remain with negative 3 Right, that is number two. Number three, they will say find uh, the function of x plus h minus the function of x over h equals to remember the function of x plus h minus the function of x. Get this part, and then this part equals to these two terms. Therefore, I'm going to replace this by this two terms and other terms and then divide them by h divide all of them by h then we are going to have negative 3 2 square root 3 x negative 5 over 2 h plus 15 8 this x all divide by h so let's try to simplify this so to simplify this uh, when you check here you have the common factor between these two terms uh, there is h here there is h there that means h is common therefore let's take out h as the common factor then you will say h And then this term divided by h, you will remain with negative 3, 2 square root 3, x negative 5 over 2. This h divided by h would be 1, that's why I'm no longer writing it today. Plus 15 over 8 square root 3. Uh, x negative 7 over 2 oh actually we have to say this term divided by this h then you'll have h squared divided by h you will remain with one h there you will remain with one h uh, okay plus all over h then from there uh, this h will divide this then it means that this expression or this function finally will be equals to negative 3 2 square root of 3 x negative 5 over 2 plus 15 8 square root of 3 x negative 7 
over 2H plus. Then number four, they will say find the limit of the function of x plus h minus the function of x over h when h approaches zero. Then you just have to replace this this part you are going to replace it by these two terms then you'll have lim h approaches zero replace this by these two terms since these two terms equals to that which is this then you'll have uh, you can open bracket negative three two square root three x negative five over two plus 15 8 square root of 3 x negative 7 over 2 h plus other terms then in the next step you just have to take the limit so when we take the limit we just mean that we are going to replace uh, h by 0 then once you take the limit, when you start to replace h by 0, you must not write this thing. So once you do the substitution, you don't write this. Then you'll have negative 3 over 2 square root 3 x negative 5 over 2 plus 15 8 square root 3x to the power negative 7 over 2h. So now instead of h, we will have 0 plus those other terms. Then anything multiplied by 0, it's 0. Then now from This formula of binomial theorem when we check here, here h this is raised to the power 1 h is raised to the power 2 the next term h will be raised to the power 3 the next term h will be raised to the power 4 meaning that here we were gonna have if we continued with that uh, binomial theorem here we the next term it was gonna have uh, h squared the next term was gonna have h cubed and blah 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 and so forth so the same thing here uh, after taking that common factor out then here we were going to have h and then the next term was going to have h squared and then h cubed and so forth. So in the next step here we were going to replace whatever term that will be here will be multiplied by h squared and then we were going to replace that term by 0 squared and then that other term by 0 cubed. And then anything anything multiplied by zero will be zero so that's why we just need up to three terms because those other terms at the end will be multiplied by by zero then anything multiplied by zero will just be zero so that's why we just need three terms here okay lastly the final answer since this one multiplied by this will be zero and those other terms which will consist h squared h cubed we will replace h by zero automatically those terms will be multiplied by zero and then anything multiplied by zero will be zero so this 
terms automatically now will disappear since they will be equals to zero then it means that finally you will remain with negative three two square root three x negative five over two so this is your your final answer so your final answer will always be from the the second term so this is the most important term this one so our final answer will always be this from this second term actually it will be this second the coefficient of this second term if you consider h as the variable so this part will always be the final answer then remember you can always verify your answer by using the uh, this basic law of differentiation a x to the power n the derivative of this equals to uh, a n x n minus 1 so in this case originally you had uh, f of x equals to 1 over square root of 3 x negative 3 over 2 so when you differentiate this using this law when you follow this law you will have a which is this constant which is 1 over square root of 3 and then n which is negative 3 over 2 x and then n negative 3 over 2 minus 1 then negative 1 multiplied by negative 3 it will be negative 3 2 multiplied by the square root of 2 it will be 2 square root of or 2 square root of 3 and then x this one negative 3 over 2 minus 1 it will be negative 5 over 2 so this part which is this one so it's wise always to after differentiating from first principle uh, you verify that by using this uh, this rule all right thank you that's all